What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Southern Stuff. I'm going to show y'all how to build some commercial crawfish traps today. Uh, there's a few videos on YouTube showing how to make something, but it's not crawfish traps. This is what you're going to want your finished product to look like. This is double-coated wire. It's called Swamp Mesh. We'll get it from Swamp Mesh in Morgan City. It is a 270 roll for five footers. This is an actual five foot trap. This is how a commercial, this is what a commercial trap looks like. This ain't no plastic wire. This is metal coated wire. It is metal wire coated, double coated. It's gonna last a long time. This will be three or four crawfish seasons at least, if not longer. Sometimes you can make them last years and years and years. But we're gonna show y'all a little bit this morning on how to make these traps because there is no actual video showing you how to make a trap. So you're gonna start with your first product. It's gonna look like this. When you order your rolls of wire, they'll come like this from Swamp Mesh, 100 foot rolls, five foot tall. And uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do on a five foot trap is uh, you're gonna want a 52 inch barrel. What I mean by that is this is a barrel. This is what a barrel looks like. It is just a barrel. Now, this one here looks a little weird because we're getting close to the end of the roll, and the end of the roll kind of messes up a little bit. But this is what your barrel's going to look like all the way through. You don't want to do nothing else. So in order to get this, you're going to take you a piece of wire. You're going to roll it out, cut, 52, cut it at 52 inches. And then as you see here, you're going to overlap it twice, just like that. And then you're going to put your hog rings over here. Michael's already working on that this morning. You take your hog rings and you just crimp them on that wire there to hold it together. Now, some people sew them and there ain't nothing wrong with sewing it. And that's uh, for another video we'll show later on how to sew the crawfish wire to where you don't have to use hog rings. But uh, I like to use hog rings. I find it to last longer. So that's just my personal opinion. And then Michael's going to show y'all we're going to have to make the barrel. He's got the barrel made now. It looks like this. Looks like that all the way through. And we're gonna show y'all step by step on how to make the flues on the end. The flues is what the crawfish use to go in. And they can't get back out once they go in because the flue is directional. So you're gonna crimp it, you're gonna pull it together in the center and kind of squeeze it down a little bit to make the end of this trap flat, make that barrel flat. And then you're gonna take your hog rings and hog ring the end of the trap together. And that's gonna hold all this seam right here together. This whole seam, we're gonna hog ring this whole seam. So y'all bear with us a minute. We're gonna hog ring this whole seam. Hog rings, you can get tractor supply, somewhere like that, uh, co-ops. Order them online, you can order them with the pliers. The pliers is only like, I think the pliers in 500 hog rings is like uh, $25 or something like that for a good pair of pliers. Get the black handle, do not get the red handle hog ring pliers to make your traps with. We got some big ones in there for the middle. Now we got some little small quarter inch or three eighths inch uh, hog rings. And then we got some hog rings that are three quarters inch. These are what the bigger ones look like. Michael's getting that together now. And that's gonna go in the middle because you have to hog ring three wires together. When you hog ring in just two, you use the smaller ones. And when you're doing the three, we use the bigger ones because it makes it easier on you. And once you sew this whole end up, you're gonna want them all fairly close. And then from about an inch, inch to an inch and a half from the end is where you're gonna wanna put your hog ring at. Because when you cut this corner out to make you flu, Jenny, bring the cutters. That's gonna put you in a in a bind if you don't if, if you don't put it the right measurement out because then you're not gonna have a hog ring in the right spot. Then you're gonna cut the corner out. Show y'all about what that looks like when he's done. You can cut your corner. Help me flex this out so you can see the hole it's gonna make. And then your hole is gonna look something like that. It don't have to be pretty. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to cut your corner out. It ain't going to be much. I'm going to show you about right how much to cut off here. 
Now there is several ways to make crawfish traps. No, this is not the only way. This might not be the, the some people might not find this to be the best way, but it works and it works well. Now, in order to make your flues, you're gonna take and start pushing in little by little on the ends. So we can get a close up shot on that. And you're gonna push the hard wire at the top, just like this. Take your hand and shove it in. And that's the start of the flue right there. It's supposed to look like that. It's going to only be that shallow. That is not where it's going to stop at. You're going to do both of them. You, this is they're going to be uh, double flue traps. This is what commercial traps look like. Now. I want me to hold it while you do that. Now, you could use a beer bottle, anything like that. This is actually a whisker shot. How you whisker shot, 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 shot sauce? Yeah, it's a whisker shot, shot sauce. Yeah. Now, that's that Worcestershire well, sauce. You're going to take that, put the bottle top down in the hole. Beer bottles, you can actually take a baseball bat and cut the handle off of it and use the end of the baseball bat where it tapers down to the handle. That works as well. But you're going to take this and you're just going to work it back and forth until you get a what looks to be a good flu. And then you're going to straighten your corners up. Make sure your wire is still staying strong. And that's one. That's what that looks supposed to look like. That's one flu. And come across to the other side. Push that down a little bit more. My hand. And then work it side to side and pull it until you get it where you need it. Now, this is what the end of your strap is supposed to look like. As a double flu, you got two flues on it now. Your crawfish come up through here. And they go into the trap and they can't get out. So on this end, this is how you're going to throw your bait. Hole's too big, right? too much to deal with so you're going to take your haul green give me a second to find the haul green load it in your pliers in order to load these these are spring loaded so you got to pull them out like that don't drop your haul green first and set your haul green in there and the spring holds the haul green for you then you'll take on the center directly across Pinch it together, just like that. And then you come across, haul green the center, just like that. And you're gonna wanna put, I need uh, two more big ones. You're only gonna put three in the center of these uh, haul greens. You're only gonna put three of them in the center to hold. Cause not only is your wire Whenever you put it in, whenever you hang your trap in the tree, you got to tie a piece of rope on it. Well, we call it twine, fishing twine. It's a uh, trot line string. You put three like that. And now, this is what your trap's going to look like at the top. And now show them how to close the ends to where you don't mess your wire up, Michael. Turn that in. Now, when you're fishing your crawfish traps, you don't want to bend your wire too much because you're going to end up breaking it. So we, the way we fold them, is we'll collapse one end over just like that like wrapping a present and then fold the other end over the top of it like this make sure you ain't got no big holes where crawfish can get out and that's how you close the trap up so your finished product as you see should look something like this now some people go a little deeper with the flues a little shallower that's that's just preference now when you when you're done with your crawfish trap and you go to put it out right here on the top where these haul rings are you're going to put your piece of trot line string then you throw it in the water and now you're going to want your trap you lean it against a tree like that in the water and that's about the angle you're going to want on your trap so that's how you tie it up but long story short this is exactly how to build a trap that is start to finish from your barrels to your flues and we will also be doing a how-to video on how to put out crawfish straps and how to bait them very shortly. Uh, we've made uh, about 50, 60 of these traps so far. And uh, we actually have uh, another, what, 440 left to go? Yep. So another 440 left to go. This is your finished product. Y'all stay tuned for the next one.